Hi, and welcome to this section of the Calculus 3 Tutor. In this section, we're going to learn about Stokes' theorem, which is a pretty useful theorem that you'll find in vector calculus. And usually, you'll see uh, a lot of advanced books use Stokes' theorem and later on the divergence theorem to actually do a lot of proofs and stuff in, in some of your engineering classes. Uh, physics, uh, mathematics classes, and things like that. So we're going to learn about Stokes' theorem here. You're probably going to see it again eventually at some point in time uh, in, in a proof in a textbook as, as, some, as, a, as a way that they uh, use to do the math to, to actually derive what they're trying to derive, okay? So remember, what Stokes' theorem actually is, is it's basically an extension of Green's theorem, which we talked about a couple of sections ago. Remember, Green's theorem was a specialized case when we had a vector field in the xy plane Okay, and we were integrating a closed boundary, a closed path uh, in the xy plane for a vector field that only exists in the xy plane. And then Stokes, I'm sorry, Green's theorem told us that when you do that, you can change that contour integral or that, that path integral, that line integral, whatever word you want to use, that closed line integral, you can transform it from a line integral to a integral over the area, dA, uh, in there. And so that was sort of a way to convert that contour integral to to a double integral, basically, is what we were doing. But implicit in Green's theorem was that the vector field had to be in the xy plane, and the contour had to be a, a complete path in the xy plane. Well, Stokes' theorem is going to do exactly the same thing, except now we're opening it up to three dimensions. The vector field that you're interested in can be a function of three variables, x, y, and z. And of course, the contour still has to be a closed path. Okay, But basically, what we're going to do is we're going to change that contour integral but instead of changing it into a double integral like we were doing before, we're going to uh, use Stokes' theorem to change this contour integral in three dimensions okay, into a flux integral, which we did in the last section, a flux integral over a surface. Now let me, just, let me just stop there and stop talking, start drawing some pictures, because I think you'll understand what I'm getting at once I can get some pictures up on the board. Okay? So, starting from the beginning, recall Green's theorem. I'm going to do a little bit of review just to show you the motivation because once you understand that you'll understand this okay if you haven't watched Green's theorem go back and watch it right now because this is going to directly build on it okay remember that basically what you were doing in Green's theorem is you were integrating a vector field that's only existed in the xy plane that's why everything has x's and y's no z's you are basically doing this integral. This is a path integral in the xy plane of this vector field, okay? And this, it's a closed path. That's what we were basically doing. And Green's theorem basically said that that is exactly equal to integrating over a region R, and I'll remind you what that is in a second, partial of n with respect to x minus partial of m with respect to y. And it's, a, um, it's an area integral, a double integral. Uh, because of the region R there. And what you were doing there, if you remember, looking down on the xy plane, looking down on the xy plane, you have a vector field in the xy plane. That's given by m and n. Those are just the components of the vector field in the different directions. Okay? And so if you were going to integrate that uh, along a, a do basically do a line integral of that vector field counterclockwise like this, then what you, you know, we know how to do that. We know the vector field. We know this form. We know how to do those line integrals of vector fields. We've been doing that. But if it's a closed path, this path encloses a region R. Okay? It encloses a path of the region R. Now, of course, the boundary is the boundary C. And what uh, Green's theorem actually said was 